Battlefield. So no gentleman on Smashville this time around. The score is 0-0 zero to zero, and we are right now in winner's quarterfinal. So what we're going to look at a lot here, I think, is how do Prodigy and Narayan focus on the enemy team, right? Because I believe what makes most sense in this scenario is to try and go a little bit more for the Ike. Sonex is known as a very defensive camp to Sonic in singles. And of course, Sonic's the kind of character who is, he likes to have you approach him, right? Yes. So, so I think having the strategy to focus the Ike here is probably the best bet. Yes, definitely, because Ike is the one with the pretty good kill power, you would, you would probably say. A lot of kill power, actually. Since that big sword, it's heavy. The percents right now looking pretty even as me, Brawler and Ike are already looking at potentially losing their first stock here. And Prodigy actually takes it with a nice bouncing fish off the stage. Well, Sonic only sitting at 39%, just as you said, he's more on the defensive type. And they're closing yeah. out the first stock of Narayan. Yeah, it's actually pretty good that they managed to even this out. I think they're looking at a world of trouble if Sonex doesn't manage to get any opening for the enemy team. Because I think Nier is mostly going to have trouble. Look at him getting yes. ping pong here. Oh my god, that was a beautiful team combo by both of them. Like, Sonex was on the other side on stage and they simply abused that fact for throwing Nier around, around the table. Yeah, Nier under a lot of pressure here. I think I think blue team should now be trying to like manage to get both characters on the same side of the stage without hitting each other, right? The up tilt by Ike, the unexpected kill option, actually puts blue team in the lead here. Yeah, and that's the power like of those heavyweights. Yeah, you're in trouble in doubles a lot, but it's it's a lot more chaotic and a lot more frantic than singles. So those stray hits, if they manage to kill super early, that is great. And back throw into back air by Ike is of course nice nice combo here. I think. That's like a good measurement where you can see if the team has good synergy or not, if the throw combos work out. Yeah. And maybe if they're a little bit more complicated than uh, like finishing touch out of throw. Yeah, it's just, you know, teammates, of course, most static teammates know, just know how the teammate works, how he thinks and what he does. If, you, if he sees, okay, on the other side of stage, he got a grab, he's gonna throw the opponent at me and I can get a combo out of that. Very fortunate here for Red Team that that up smash that connected on both his teammate and his enemy only managed to kill the enemy here. And right, I think if you look at the percents and at the stock right now, it is kind of playing out how we expected that the Ike is under most of the pressure. And I think it, a lot of it is going to come down to whether Sun X can hold on to the second stock in order to allow Nier to take it from him. I think I think that's what they mostly should be looking at right now and how to actually kill these enemies. I think there is a safe right there. Yes, definitely. Now and would have been dead. Ooh. Th that looked very fishy there. Almost killed too. Single oh. needles there by Prodigy getting punished. Even though Narayan being off stage did not get any out of that on Prodigy. Yeah, and like three people, uh, pretty much everyone here in kill percentages, of course. Yeah, and the up tilt is gonna take out the stock from Prodigy, not a position he wants to be in. Uh, now, Red Team still on the lead, though, but Narayan sitting on 172%. It's definitely not something you wanna be at. And there's Ike's dash attack taking the stock off of Narayan. And Blue Team is actually in the lead again. Well, stock wise, they are in the lead, but the percentage makes it a little bit more difficult to determine because both players in red team are actually in a last hit situation pretty much. I mean, it's of course their enemy is Sheik. That's not the one who's gonna kill them early. That, that bouncing fish connected at 150% still did the kill. Ike is a heavy man. That is right. And now we're... Like, how are they gonna get the kill? It's pretty much down to the wire on Narayan, I think. He needs to find the opening here. Because me Brawler's up is very strong. Good kill option, good thing for two combos. Prodigy looking for the edge guard. Ooh, yeah. Ah, near missing the ledge and Sonex getting the up smash from Narayan and That right now. reversed the entire game right there. And I think like that little pause on the respawn platform is a little bit telling of the mindset right now. That must be super frustrating for them. Maybe he just used the time to get a little bit a little bit together, like, you know, I think I might be able to do this. I just need to calm down. I'm up against two good players here. 
Let's just see how I can work with it. Yeah, it's definitely possible still for him, especially since his percentage is so low. And we've seen the tendency of Narayan and Prodigy for hitting each other. It happened a lot during game one. If, if you're in a 1v2 situation like this, you can like try to play neutral, don't throw out any unsafe moves, and maybe hope that the enemy team is going to help you out a little bit in that situation. Sonic's almost getting the conversion that might have seen the stock already here. No, Two just... minutes, 40 seconds on the clock. And Sonic's actually not doing a, a bad job right now. He's camming a little bit, being more on the safe side, not trying to go in too much. Yeah, I think I think Prodigy and Narayan should mostly be looking at letting Prodigy play the neutral here and having Narayan as a little bit of a punisher to, to force Sun X to actually only use super safe moves. Yes. That's definitely a good idea since Narayan is the one of the kill power in this team. If Sheik manages to get a grab or, so, or something like that, Narayan gets a team combo. Oh, that side was unfortunate there. That allowed Sun X to get a grab. We're looking at two more minutes on the clock. How is Sun X going to get this kill? Is he going to get this kill? Ooh! Ooh. The tipper up smash by Prodigy. There was a, that was a little bit of a nail biter in the middle, and at the end, at least the two stock advantage managed to keep this not quite as close as Sonic would have liked it to be. Yeah. I think the biggest difference between Moitrix Sheik and Prodigy Sheik in this context is I think I've seen Prodigy go way less for grabs. And if he did get grabs, he didn't really utilize Narayan's pressure a lot. Like, I, I think Moitre is usually seen up throw in this situation, where you get the helicopter kick coming out of me brawler to finish out the stocks. Yes. This usually didn't happen right here in, in this situation. I think that's because Prodigy is pretty much a more more grabby player, right? I mean, how do, how do, you, how do you explain? Moitrich is... I just said it completely wrong. Moitrich is the kind of player who prefers to go in deep with a grab and get a combo conversion out of that. While Prodigy seems to me like he's more of the guy who would like to convert out of a forward air, weak hit neutral air out of hits instead of grabs. Yeah, which is which does work pretty well in singles, but in doubles, I think grabs are better options for starting team combos, more well, reliable. Well, I think grabs are probably going to work out. Uh, I mean, aerials also work out great in, in yes. doubles, right? But it's difficult to convert from most aerials if you're a teammate. This is just a way less time to react in that situation. Yes. Sonic's and Nier, of course, not having that problem. Sonic's down throw, super easy to convert out of that. Like, you pr probably get a Ike up smash out of that. Yeah. Right now, they're just toss tossing each other around. Actually playing... It's very similar to the first game, very frantic beginning, a lot of moves getting hit. But this time, it seems like the red team is having a little bit more of an advantage percentage-wise. A little bit of attempt at playing ping pong there, only two moves connect. Yeah, there's a lot going on on the screen right now. Hits are connecting everywhere, teammates are tossing each other around. And of course, the most important thing about this game as well will be who actually manages to take the first stock. Usually that team, most of the time, also ends up winning. I think, incidentally, was it last game like that as well? Yeah, I think last game, blue team was the first to lose a stock, right? Yeah, I, I think so. I think it was... Was Nier who lost his first stock? Oh, that back air by Nier could have spelled big trouble, because I think it could have converted back into an up air by Sonic. <laughs> oh, and Nier hits his own teammate <laughs> almost into the blast zone. Yeah, fortunately, Sonic manages to get back on stage. Ooh. Up smash by Narayan, making him feel the pain. Punishing the up tilt on shield for Prodigy. And the forwarder taking the first stock off of Narayan. Now we have it, throw to up B. Yes, of course at those percents it's not a threat kill-wise, but maybe... Not, not sure if he did it for damage or because it's sometimes difficult to keep dodge of what is whose percentage in doubles, right? Of course, as you said already, doubles is a bit, bit more on the chaotic side. Ooh, and the back air taking the first lock of Prodigy this time. Now, it's a bit in favor for Red Team, with Nier sitting on 120% already. 
Red Team is looking, I wouldn't say they look dominant, but it almost always looks like they have that little bit of an edge there. And seeding or rather like player knowledge-wise, I would also say that uh, Narayan and Perji are both the more experienced players. Prodigy, of course, having been featured on the last power ranking of Germany last season, I mean. Yes. So far, having had a rather weak season, so very self-aware of that, very self-critical person as well, which I think is a great quality in a player, because if you are self-critical and you're able to analyze your own mistakes, you will learn faster. Of course. Yes, That's oh. always a trait a player should have, just realizing his mistakes and working on them. Yeah. Second hit of Bouncing Fish converting a kill on near there. I don't quite understand the single needles that Prodigy keeps throwing out here or there at very low percentages. It feels like they're unsafe on hit even. Over there, not enough for the kill on Marianne, yeah. And actually, up is his own teammate. Yeah. Team making it back to stage, stage safe. Yeah, Prodigy stopping the team combo there from happening, but wasn't able to do it a second time as Sun is down for a connect. And the back air by Ike actually manages to even out the stocks right here. And the percentage on Narayan makes it very possible as the F Smash actually managed to finish the stock on him as well. And now we're looking at a stock lead on the blue team. It looks a lot like the first game actually. The blue team was in the stock lead as well. The red team, the last time they managed to get us around. Yes, the percentages look exactly like last time, you're right. So, if Marianne and Prodigy manage to find the kills again this time, two at the same time, we're looking at a 2v1 again. Hopefully it won't happen again, honestly. Movement by Prodigy to confuse Nier, manages to get a forward air out of that, but it's not going to kill. Still a sheep player there. Bouncing Fish not quite getting the kill, connecting on the shield. Nier being off stage again, oh, getting Prodigy off. Watch on the wolf is far over there. Finally, the bouncing fish taking the stock by Sun X, putting him on the last one. Now each player in a last stock situation, but near in a lot of trouble with his percentages. And again, this looks a lot like game one. Near sitting on 167%, which is dangerous, really dangerous. Not the right time to get greedy though for the red team as of course this this Ike is potentially very dead, but he's also very deadly. Yeah. If he manages to get a single hit on you with that rage, it is absolutely disastrous. And Prodigy gets rid of that threat, leaving Sun X to play the 1v2. Both his enemies at formidable percent though. This is very doable for him. Yes. He manages to get a little bit more on the patient side, you know, not getting grabbed. Bombing attack not connecting there. Yeah, but Narayana Prodigy covering the ledge, the ledge excellently. Oh, getting a little bit of a conflict there. Both wanted to hit him. Managed to hit each other actually in that situation. That back air was such a good call out, but he wasn't quite high enough. Oh, and the up B manages to finish that set. It was so close both times. It was actually a really enjoyable set. Yes. It was nice to see. Actually, it's. It was quite unfortunate for the blue team that Nier died always first, being yeah. the man with the kill power there. Absolutely. That was... Uh, it, it kind of didn't feel unexpected, because as we analyzed the set before it happened, we actually did say exactly that, that most likely we would see Sonic hanging in the back and Ike being the main focus of Prodigy and Narayan. Well, of course not maybe a conscious main focus, but you're going to get more hits on that big body, right? That slow big body is way easier to hit. And that's the way it actually unfolded in that set. So what are we looking at next, I wonder? We have actually a little